And then uh, last night on Raw, Seth Rollins did a lion salt, banged his knee on the mat, and uh, limped his way through the rest of the match, limped his way backstage, and he'll be undergoing an MRI, and hopefully it's not a serious injury, or uh, his whole road to WrestleMania will be out the window. Yeah. yeah. As someone who's through. had a serious knee injury and competed on it in a fight, I can't imagine that Seth has like a torn ACL or anything that's, you know, he was jumping off the ropes. He was able to land moves. I don't know well, if he Hold be that able to thought. We got the music and... here. Hold that thought. Back in a moment, Observer Live. So, uh, what's the uh, story here you were talking about, Tom? Well, I don't have a prognosis or a diagnosis necessarily for Seth Rollins. I don't know what happened, but based on what I saw, it didn't look like it was a twisting injury of sorts, which is where you would probably cause the most damage to ligaments. It looks like if he, anything, he slammed his knee on the mat, maybe some damage to the patella, hopefully something along those lines. If it was, you know, a bunch of torn ligaments, I I don't know if he'd be able to finish the match like he did. He was still able to lift up Jinder. He was able to slam him around. He was able to take bumps. He was able to leap off the top rope. So hopefully, well, it's not I will too say bad. I will say one thing. Yes, he did do all the lifting and everything like that. But if you watch the uh, the frog splash he did, he didn't even touch the bad leg. Like he he landed sideways to not hit his other knee. And when he went for the curb stomp, I mean, he sort of jumped, but he didn't put his weight on the other leg when he landed. He he did a he did a falling curb stomp where he put the foot on the guy's head and it just fell on his. But uh, because uh, he didn't want to put weight on it. So, I mean, it was bugging him. But uh, hopefully, you know, not a serious injury. Although any knee injury is no good. At least I've heard. Didn't uh, Frank Shamrock have, like, no ligaments in his knees at all? Isn't that what they said? That always amazes me when I would hear things like that or people running around with no ACL. Like, I twisted my kneecap all the way around and... You know, tore all of the cartilage, and, and I just, I can't, that was painful. I cannot imagine just constantly, with nothing there, just the constant pain that you, you have to be in and fight through, especially to be at those types of levels. It's inc- That's incredible to me. Well, especially in a sport where you're running and jumping, it becomes a, a lot more important to have those ACLs. Someone like Frank Shamrock, if you remember towards the tail end of his career, he was just getting taken down left and right and then yeah. getting submissions off his back, fighting up from the bottom. So he may not have had any ligaments in his knees towards the end there. Well, for the Raw show, it opened up with a Cody promo, and uh, he gets interrupted by Drew. And they had a long back-and-forth talking segment, which uh, basically is they both want to finish their story at WrestleMania. And Drew says, I'm going to do it first. The WrestleMania belongs to me. And then Cody noted, you know, you keep talking about this match we had together before we both came back to WWE, the last match we had before I came back, or you came back. Who won that match? And, of course, that was Cody. And then later they announced in the show, Cody is going to have a face-to-face with CM Punk next week. That'll be something, let me tell you. We had uh, Priest meeting with Truth. Truth has been selling bootleg shirts. And apparently everybody that buys these shirts, they pay in cash with crisp $100 bills. So he's got a giant wad of 100s, and he gives a a wad of it to Priest, and he says, that's your cut. And Priest is like, all right, you can keep selling shirts, but keep it quiet. And tonight in this tag match, don't even tag in, because it was going to be Miz and uh, Truth against J.D. and Dirty Dom, which was next, and uh, ends up with Truth actually starting the match, so he didn't tag in, and they're going back and forth, and he feels bad that he's beating these guys up, but they don't feel bad about beating him up. And then we had my favorite long-running gag on this show just to make me furious, and that is spending eight minutes to build up a hot tag with two teases... And then doing the hot tag during the break. Not even picture in picture. I was watching. I wasn't even watching the commercial. But they did the hot tag during the break. 
And then uh, it was a good match. We ended with uh, JD going for a cradle. Champa kicked out. DDT of an exploder attempt. Meet in the middle. One, two, three. And uh, good match. Atrocious production. Chelsea wants a rematch. Pierce is like, you had a rematch. You lost. So they he signed them to a match with Indy and Candice for later. And then we had another one. Indy and Candice versus Chelsea and Piper. Ugh. Your your uh, favorite performers, Mike, Katana and Caden, are backstage watching, okay? They cut to the back to show them watching exactly when the baby faces make the hot tag. I was like, that's two in a row. Can we do it again? So we missed the hot tag for the second straight match. And then Indy and Candice hit a double moonsault. Indy covers, but she's not legal. The referee starts to count one. Candace shoves Indy out of the way, so she's the proper person covering. Two. The ref's still counting. Three. <laughs> now, they had done a storyline that the ref was incompetent, but the key to this, guys, is the ref actually wasn't incompetent last week. Chelsea's complaint was that he counted too slow, which he didn't. So I don't think this was storyline. I think this was incompetence. Yeah. So uh, if this is storyline, this is one of the smartest ways to do this that I've ever seen. Kevin Dunn gets ousted. Everybody celebrates. And then we get this raw with like one faux pas after another. And we are one step closer to Caden and Katana against Candace and Indy Hartwell. That does sound... Horrible. God But bless. we'll see. We'll see. Rhea told Judgment Day she had to go address the division. And then the rest of the guys had an argument over truth. And Finn gets presented with his cut. And now he likes truth. And JD goes, well, do I get a cut? And Priest says, your name's not on the shirt. Probably not. <laughs> Said, let's focus on our match. Gunther made his return. And uh, got a big pop. He vows to go win the Rumble main event mania. He puts over Ludwig. And then who he calls Ludwig. And then out comes Xavier Woods. It's one of those things. It's like it's like the pronunciation of Okada's name. It's like, you know, everybody in America, well, the proper way to pronounce it is Ludwig. And then you got the actual guy that speaks, you know, German. And he's like, Ludwig. Ludwig, I'm proud of you, Ludwig. And so Xavier Woods comes out, and he says, you and I got a problem. You beat up Kofi, you stomped his head into the steps. Well, I got to take care of you. So it's Woods and Kaiser, and uh, they brawl outside. Kaiser tries to hit him with a chair, misses. So Woods hits him with a chair, gets DQ'd. And then uh, Woods gets a chair. Kaiser boots into his face. This crowd chants, we want tables! Because everybody wants these stupid tables for some reason. And Woods tries to uh, drop kick his head into the steps, but Kaiser escapes. This feud must continue. Can I ask you Is, both a question here? Quickly. Yeah. Okay, Vinci. If I'm Vinci, am I nervous? Because they keep wanting to make Kaiser something a little more special. He's got his own shirt, European elegance, all that sort of stuff. And they really have not done anything with Vinci outside of a cool entrance they gave him for a minute in, X, in NXT. I mean, is this just a matter of time here? I don't know. He looked great last week. They gave him a big push last week. And I'm, this I'm is... more concerned with why Xavier Woods was dressed like Animal from the Muppets. <laughs> well, <laughs> what? he plays the drums. <laughs> he's, he's got some nose piercings now, too. He looked insane. You know one thing that I like that's continued with Vince Gone into the Triple H era? It's a Muppet show? That poor Byron Saxon's gimmick is he's an absolute moron. <laughs> so this poor guy comes out, and he has to ask Woods, why were you so angry tonight? And Woods is like, why do you think I'm so angry? He beat up Stomp Kofi's head into his head. <sighs> and then Lud Ludwig attacks him, and they have a brawl. And Ludwig backs down. I guess guys start yelling me about how I pronounce it now? Huh? Why don't you yell at old Gunther? Lud oh, are you going to call it Gunther? Well, you know, he probably calls himself Gunther. Did he ever face Kazuchiko Okada, or am I imagining things? Then we had Akira, Ivar versus Akira Tozawa. This match was up my alley. Man, what a match. <laughs> Ivar just kills this guy. 
But then Tozawa makes a comeback. Maxine distracts Ivar. Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. He wasn't the only one distracted. I knew it was coming. I was waiting. (laughs) And then Tozawa hits a big kick. Sunset flip powerbomb gets the pin. Valhalla beats up Maxine. Ivar kills Tozawa. Next week, we have Ivy Nile versus Valhalla, which should be pretty good. And Chad Gable versus Ivar. That sounds awesome. Awesome. Maxine against Valhalla ought to be something one day. We had a Rhea promo interrupted by Becky. And uh, I haven't figured out exactly where they're going, but the match is Rhea and Becky at WrestleMania. I mean, they teased it here. The announcers talked about how we all want to see it. Uh, What's her name? Jackie Redmond or whatever. She talked about how we all want to see that match. So whatever they do, I don't know if it means Becky's winning the Rumble or maybe, you know, they... Actually, you know, they could actually do the... It'd be horrible, but Nia and Becky tying, and then they have to do a match at Elimination Chamber, and Becky wins and goes you on You don't think Mania. Bailey's winning? I don't know. Nah. I don't think so. Oh, that's my hope. We had Finn and Priest versus Miz and Truth, which was, uh, which was all comedy. Priest reluctantly gives Truth south of heaven. Finn covers him for the pin. And uh, Priest likes his truth. Everyone else could take him or leave him. Then we had Jinder. <laughs> this is amazing. So he's the modern day Maharaja. He's meditating. And he's giving a very, very thoughtful promo about how I am the most talked about star of 2024. Everybody is divided, but my focus is singular. Tonight, everyone will be unified when I beat Seth freaking Rollins. <laughs> For the world title. I was like, this guy meditating can't even not say freaking. Like, he can't just call the guy Seth Rollins. <laughs> nope. And then they go, this match, moments away. Well, moments away was a Shayna Zoe entrance, a commercial break, a Shinsuke Nakamura promo talking about the Rumble, a Natty Tegan entrance, a Natty and Tegan versus Zoe and Shayna match, which uh, Shayna won by putting Natty in the bulldog choke for the submission. And then, 15, 20 minutes later, after they said it's it's imminent, well, we finally got Jinder and Seth Rollins. And uh, granted, Seth hurt his knee, but uh, this wasn't much of a match. It was just sort of there. There. And uh, Seth, had, there was one great near fall where, uh, well, first we had another one. So... Drew and Priest start brawling at ringside. And all of a sudden, the announcers scream, My God, what a cheap shot! And I'm like, what? I, what are you talking about? We don't see it. They didn't show us. And there's a kick out. And then... In, in the sheer, I believe. Yeah, I think it was... Veered, right? Veer. Veer did something. But, like, I rewound it. You can't even see it in the background. Like, you can't see what happened at all. Hit him with a fastball. They don't tell you. <laughs> you may have. And then uh, then Veer finally gets a briefcase behind the ref's back. Hits Seth. Jinder hits the Coloss. But Seth kicks out. Not like this. It was a good near fall. And then Mahal tries it again. Seth avoids it. Hits a stomp on one leg. Gets the pin. And uh, I wrote match was good. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, it was fine. Sorry. I've seen bad matches, guys. Like, I don't think I, some of you realize the bad matches I've seen in my life. This match was fine. But the question is, is it going to be better than Samoa Joe and Hook? No, Samoa Joe and Hook's going to be good. I just have this feeling. It's going to be good. And that is coming up tomorrow, or on, uh, on whatever day that is, Wednesday. Which is tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.